Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. Alyeska Pipeline Service Company, sustaining Alaska's pipeline and its operations today and into the future. Find a living in fisheries. The UAS Fisheries Technology Program offers online study from anywhere in Alaska, plus labs and workshops in many Alaska towns. most likely a chunk. Find your living without leaving where you are. Fisheries Technology from UAS. The National Weather Service. And good Thursday, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service. It is the 30th of March. We are almost toward the end of the month. And as always, we encourage you every day of the month to stay up to date on your local weather situation there in any part of Alaska and yours. Now, if you're in southwest Alaska, things have been fairly quiet and they are changing now. So it's a good time in southwest to sit up and pay a little more close attention than you have in the last several days, several weeks for that matter. Great flying weather, as I understand it. Uh, the number to call is 800-472-0391. You can always find us online at weather.gov slash Alaska or Anchorage slash Juno slash Fairbanks, however you like to get there. And a lot of these pages have low bandwidth options. So if you need to find something that works a little bit better on your mobile device, if you're not in the greatest area for reception or you're on just a lower connection there on your PC or at the school or wherever you are, uh, there should be some better options for you. If you can't find what you need, let us know. nws.ar.tvweather at noaa.gov is the best way to email us. And of course, we'll always take your phone call as well. Here's a look at what's going on around the state. We have no watches, warnings, or advisories tonight, so things are fairly quiet there. Out in Marine Land, uh, around the Barrens, the Shelikoff Strait region, we do have storm warnings in effect tonight. Many other areas all the way around the Horn uh, from the northwest and eastern Gulf Coast are under some type of gale warning. Uh, those are a little bit stronger there across some of the northern Gulf Coast. And obviously we have a weather system trying to work its way northward. Here's a low pressure system here and you can see some little bubbles of convection just south of St. Point. Notice how this is spreading out very quickly as we head uh, through the afternoon hours today. Already the cloud shield making its way over southeast and into the interior. Another look at this also indicates that northerly winds are coming in behind this. So that means more cold air is meeting up with this low pressure system. And here across southwestern Alaska, don't be surprised to run into some accumulating snow. Now, right now, it looks like about a half inch to one inch in most areas between Bethel out toward Bristol Bay. But there's a chance that if this slows down, uh, there could be a little bit more. Don't be surprised if you see some snow. Out across the interior, yeah, there's probably going to be some snow across the south-facing slopes of the Brooks Range here. Another surge of this will work its way northward and still working through places like Arctic Village now. On the north side, uh, fairly dry conditions, high pressure still in charge, and that north and northeasterly flow coming down through the Bering Strait will keep things breezy and cool. Probably enough breeze to move some of the snow that's on the ground around and uh, continue pushing the ice edge towards St. Paul and St. George. You can see it here on the visible satellite picture. There's the islands, uh, not easily seen under all this, but uh, this big bright white section here is just a part of the ice, so we'll have a better analysis of it for you as we always do a little bit later. But that north and easterly wind has been persistent for weeks, and it is now pushing that ice edge within just a few, just several nautical miles of St. Paul and not too far away from St. George as well. So the closest sizable ice strip, I believe, was about five nautical miles away from St. Paul. Uh, but if we check the analysis a little bit, it's going to look like it's right on top of the island. The main ice edge, the 80% concentration and higher, is still a little bit further away. But it's still creeping your way if you're in St. Paul and St. George. Here's a look at the weather map then tonight. Uh, low pressure sitting at 967 millibars across the western Gulf. That is sending a warm and wet surge of air across the northern and western Gulf and towards southeast, where we've already seen a few pockets of uh, rainfall today, including some areas around the Northern Canal down towards Stevens Passage. 
and into the icy Strait region. You'll notice uh, some pockets of heavier snowfall across western Prince William Sound today. Uh, no surprise there that uh, moisture being shoved right up against the Chugach Range and the Kenai Mountains, squeezing out uh, some periods of uh, occasionally moderate snow. But it looks like this will uh, continue into tonight. And with that, we also expect winds to come up, not only for southeastern Alaska, but also for south central Alaska. The winds will probably start to bring up uh, some of the warmer temperatures that you've been waiting for for spring. The problem is there's already snow on the ground. So enjoy the slush while you have it there. For southeast, winds will start to be a little more blustery during the overnight hours. Periods of rain and snow a little bit further north into the northern Lynn Canal and out across Bristol Bay. Here comes snow for you all the way up toward Bethel and uh, down toward the Bering Sea coast of the Alaska Peninsula. Up north, a break in the clouds telling us that air is rushing up and over the Alaska Range and then diving down, drying out as it goes along the Yukon Valley. Northward, we're back into the upward moving air and a better chance for some snowfall across the eastern sections of the coastal plain. High pressure is still in charge there, so winds should be fairly light, if not variable at times overnight. And then the air rushes back down through the Bering Strait, blowing and drifting around at times if it's strong enough. And it looks like uh, you'll have some occasional blowing snow, uh, mainly offshore, all the way through uh, either side of the Bering Strait, St. Lawrence Island, Little and Big Diomede, and down around St. Matthew to Nunavak Island. Warmer air is still moving northward, though that process is beginning to wrap up on itself as we get into Friday. We'll see that another surge of rainfall makes its way into southeast. Notice that the lines of constant pressure here, those black lines or isobars, kind of spreading out a little bit more. That's good news if you don't like the wind. That should help to improve the situation a little bit. And we'll also see similar trends across south central. Where is the wind going to be strongest? Probably out over the open water. And certainly on the west side of this weather system, all the way from the YK Delta, Monarch down toward Nunavak Island, and uh, generally from Nikolsky eastward toward the center of low pressure at 978 millibars. The winds will be strongest in here. As that lifts northward, we're also going to be pushing that air together a little bit more. Remember, we're working against high pressure, blocking that up to the north. So the winds are going to start to pick up across some of your northern passes. So we'll be watching for changes in ceiling and visibility there. It doesn't look like a major threat for any significant snowfall, but it does look like the winds are going to come up and probably be a little more chop as we get into Friday and Saturday. A boundary of uh, weather uh, sitting right across the Yukon Valley. So low pressure sits out across the YK Delta. Snow showers on the north and west side. Accumulating snow still possible around Bristol Bay. Remember I said if that weather system stalls out, there could be more. So right now we're looking at about a half to one inch. It doesn't look like it's ever going to be terribly heavy snow, but there's a possibility that some of that could change if the position of this changes a little bit more. Across the northern Gulf Coast, rain and snow becomes more likely in many communities, especially around Prince William Sound. And for many around Anchorage and all the way south toward Kenai and uh, probably Homer, the air rushing over the mountains should preclude a whole lot of precipitation, but don't be surprised if you see a raindrop or a snowflake from time to time. Across southeast, look for periods of rainfall here across all of the panhandle. Again, the lines of constant pressure telling us that there's probably going to be a little bit of a stiffer breeze, but it may not be horribly windy across the region. All that said, keep an eye on uh, flying conditions because it does look like low-level wind shear will be an issue all the way around south central to southeast and probably into the Alaska Peninsula, especially tomorrow as this weather system is moving in and could easily continue into Saturday with a map looking like that. Your forecast today, well, let's start with current conditions. How were things today before we get into the future? Uh, mid to upper 40s for many across southeast, Ketchikan, Craig, Klawak, Hyder, Sitka, Petersburg, everybody enjoying temps in the lower to mid 40s. Looks like Haynes made it up to about uh, 45 today, 37 around Yakutat, Cordova 34. Around Valdez, it was 32 degrees, 33 in Seward, 36 for Homer and 28 in Kenai. Uh, right at Anchorage, 32 degrees up the road around Palmer and Wasilla, not too much different. 19 degrees at the Matanuska Glacier, 35 in Talkeetna. 34 degrees if you're out around uh, the border crossing today in Toke, 28 in Fairbanks. Healy made it up to 31 at 3 o'clock. It was 44 degrees in Eagle and 27 in Fort Yukon. A little bit to the west there, temps were in the 20s for uh, Bettles, Ambler only 7 degrees, Anaktuvik Pass 0, 25 for Arctic Village, and 3 below in Barrow. A little bit further east, uh, Kaktovik had 6, Prudhoe Bay and Dead Horse Colder at 4 below, Wainwright 9 below, Kotzebue Sound temperatures anywhere from about 0 as you get into the upper part of the Sound uh, to 13 degrees around Kivalina, Kotzebue itself 8 degrees, Shishmaref holding at 9. About the same there for Nome, and uh, well, Unalakleet was near 4 degrees today. Galena, 17, 1 degree colder in Bethel, 12 in Nunavak Island, 
20s and 30s for Bristol Bay, 19 degrees in St. Paul, 24 in St. George. The Alaska Peninsula had high temperatures in the lower to mid 30s this afternoon. It was 36 in Kodiak. Uh, looks like uh, 34 for both Adak and Atka, as well as Shemya, 34 degrees this afternoon. Overnight low temperatures will hold in the upper 20s to lower 30s for many locations. Uh, you'll notice the Parks Highway system all the way down toward uh, the Cook Inlet region, 37 in uh, Kodiak. 20s and 30s for the Alaska Peninsula, Dutch Harbor and Unalaska looking at 29. Southeast, lower to mid 40s, uh, the middle Tanana Valley back in the mid, four, uh, mid teens, I should say. Uh, anywhere from 10 to about 15 below for the North Slope. Kotzebue Sound, 5 to 10 below. Nome, you're looking at 4 below overnight with a high of 15 tomorrow. Mid to upper 40s for many in Southeast. South Central, mid to upper 40s for you. Kodiak, 42. Fairbanks, around 40 degrees. Mid 40s, uh, again, for the Anchorage area. Up around Arctic Village, 18 degrees. Anaktuvik Pass, a colder 4. Barrow down to 2 degrees. Kotzebue Sound back in the single digits again. A high of 15 for Nome Savunga. Looking at 16 for your Friday. And the YK Delta, let's say north of Monarch, anywhere from the upper teens and lower 20s. South of Bethel, you're in the upper 20s to lower 30s, maybe even 40 degrees around King Salmon. And again, that snow is going to be very particular about where it lands because of that low pressure system moving in. So weather conditions are changing in the YK. Here's a look at flying weather then. Wow, uh, IFR across a large chunk of southeast all the way around the Gulf Coast, up Cook Inlet and the western Alaska Range as well as uh, many in the Bristol Bay region and the Alaska Peninsula. And that's just down south. Up north, we have IFR conditions across the northern parts of the uh, Seward Peninsula and southern Kotzebue Sound, as well as the northern coastline and uh, the coastal plain itself up north on the slope. MVFR conditions there by the afternoon, so some improvement noted. IFR conditions continue around parts of southwest and uh, just south of Bethel, so some villages may be locked in a good uh, chunk tomorrow, so if you've got flying plans, you might want to check that. IFR conditions around Cook Inlet to the eastern side of Kodiak Island and all the way back in toward uh, uh, Knack Neck, and then as you get up toward uh, the northern Gulf Coast and a large chunk of the higher terrain for southeast, especially in the inside waters, up through Lynn Canal, IFR is expected in the afternoon. So again, changing conditions for you. Anaktuvik Pass, IFR to start. Some improvements are possible moving from west to east during the day, so watch for VFR conditions to develop by the end of the day. Lake Clark and Merrill Pass looks like you're going to sit at IFR through most of the day if you're trying to get through there. Uh, Rainy Pass also expecting IFR through most of the morning hours. Windy Pass may hold at marginal conditions through a good chunk of the day. Looks like Isabel Pass also starting out at IFR. MVFR conditions develop by the afternoon. Mentasta Pass right now looks to escape with VFR through most of your Friday. Tanita Pass, we expect to see IFR conditions, maybe some improvements toward MVFR, so keep watch on that. Again, uh, low pressure hovering very close to the region may sling just enough moisture in the right spot for that to improve. Uh, moisture conditions there in Portage Pass, not so much. Looks like IFR, especially on the eastern side, so keep an eye on that if you've got travel plans. And again, Chilkoot and White Pass, it looks like conditions actually worsen through the day, but may actually start at IFR. So keep an eye on changing conditions there up and down southeast. Freezing levels show that warm, wet air is working its way up through southeastern Alaska right now and overnight and into the early morning hours. We expect that 2,000 foot freezing line to be right over the capital city and closing in on Glacier Bay south of Sitka to about high to Gwaii. Levels increase to about four to 6,000 feet. Around the Alaska Peninsula from about Sand Point southward, you can see levels there above two to 4,000 feet. The surface freezing line still just north of all that, uh, running right through Bristol Bay and then dropping south of the Aleutians for your start tomorrow. Icing potential, yeah, uh, looks like moisture is increasing enough for that to be an issue across the North Slope and the Eastern Brooks Range above 2,000 feet. We're going to call that light to isolated moderate. A better chance for a little more moderate icing across the western side of the low pressure system, which is going to be right about here. Uh, so at least light to isolated moderate across parts of Southwest and the Alaska Peninsula, but an increasing threat for occasional moderate tomorrow. So keep an eye on that. Make sure you're checking out the Alaska Aviation Weather Unit pages for the very latest updates. And of course, your PI reps really do matter quite a bit. Across the northern and eastern Gulf Coast, again, an increasing risk for icing. We're going to call this occasional moderate right along the coast. And this will be very close to that frontal boundary as it's working in toward the coastline above 3,000 feet. How about the jet stream? Well, the powerful Pacific jet is taking on kind of a new configuration here, a very fast moving super highway of weather moving south of uh, Alaska by a long shot. And there's several interruptions in this, but overall it is a, a fairly powerful trough that's encompassing 
a large part of the North Pacific. Uh, high pressure is in the middle of that, trying to slow things down, but what it's really doing is helping the conveyor belt move moisture right across the Aleutians and then right into the Gulf. We also have another ribbon of fast moving air coming out of southwestern Alaska and into western Canada. So the focus for the really big stuff right now is still well to our south. Any Pacific systems that have a good amount of moisture are moving into the Pacific Northwest. But a few pieces of that are snaking its way right through here and into the Gulf. And that's what we're experiencing tonight and into the next several days for southeast and south central. At 9,000 feet, a low pressure system in the morning will be hovering very close to Cape Newenham. Uh, temperatures or wind speeds 20 to 50 knots with north winds up to 30 to 50 knots coming through the eastern chain. Southerly is picking up a little bit more for southeast as well, 15 to as high as 35 knots. Winds are still fairly light in the interior, especially the northern interior. And then across the west coast, uh, winds still moving in from the north and east, especially across Kotzebue Sound and the Seward Peninsula. At 3,000 feet, low pressure is a little bit further south and east, uh, not too far away from Sand Point or a fog neck. Uh, looks like northerly is coming across Norton Sound at about 35 knots or so. Southerly is off the Gulf, move into the Chugach Range and uh, the Kenai Mountains, anywhere from 10 to 20 knots. A little bit more of an easterly flow through the upper Yukon and the Brooks Range, 15 to 20 knots there and over the North Slope. For southeast, your wind speeds off the eastern Gulf coming in from the south at about 10 to 40 knots for your daytime tomorrow at 3,000 feet. Here's turbulence, and as you would expect, with more winds come more uh, chances for at least low-level wind shear. And that's kind of what we've got painted on here today. So isolated severe for tomorrow across the interior of southeast and across Cook Inlet and western Prince William Sound and the Kenai Peninsula there. Uh, many areas also looking at increased risk for occasional moderate for southwest, the Alaska Peninsula, the eastern chain, and once again, the northern Gulf Coast and parts of southeast. Uh, also watch for CHOP through the Bering Strait and St. Lawrence Island. That's a look at your aviation forecast. I'm back with the Ice Edge update and your marine weather here in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. Royal Opposition. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Alberry, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regas, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. If your favorite planet is Jupiter, have we got a show for you. That's right, James. Jupiter is in such a great location for viewing right now. We've devoted this entire episode to the largest planet in our solar system. Plus, on April 7th, you'll get to see Jupiter at its biggest and brightest. Let's show you. Okay, we have our sky set for 10 p.m. any night this week. If you look toward the east, you'll see Jupiter among the stars of Virgo the Maiden. To be sure you found Virgo, simply look to the northeast and you'll find the four stars that mark the bowl of the Big Dipper and the three stars that mark its handle. By tracing an arc with the stars in the handle, you'll run smack dab into the star Arcturus. If you continue drawing a straight line away from Arcturus toward the south, you'll run into Spica, the brightest star in Virgo. Jupiter is the bright, non-twinkling light just up to the left of Spica. Jupiter is not only the largest planet in our solar system, but its gravity is so strong that it's sometimes referred to as the solar system's vacuum cleaner. Jupiter's gravity attracts nearby asteroids and other small solar system bodies, and it has been known to dramatically change the orbits of inbound comets, which can shorten or lengthen the amount of time it takes for the comet to orbit the Sun. In July 1994, fragments of comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 collided with Jupiter, providing the first direct observation of a collision between two solar system objects. The planet Jupiter has been observed in the sky since antiquity. The ancient Romans named it after the king of their gods, whom the Greeks referred to as Zeus. Babylonian astronomers have records of Jupiter dating back to the 7th century BC. In his book The Almagest, Greek astronomer Claudius Ptolemy used Jupiter's motion with respect to the Earth to refine his Earth-centered model of the solar system. By doing this, Ptolemy showed that Jupiter took almost 12 years to make a complete circuit of the sky, which we now know as the amount of time it takes Jupiter to orbit the Sun. In 1610, Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei studied Jupiter using a telescope and is credited with discovering the four largest moons of Jupiter, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. 
The motions of these moons around Jupiter provided Galileo with an example supporting Nicholas Copernicus's view of a sun-centered solar system. Because if you look at Jupiter and its moons, they do look like a miniature version of our solar system. Astronomers Giovanni Cassini and Robert Hooke both noticed a large red spot on Jupiter during their telescopic observations in the 1660s. This spot, affectionately called the Great Red Spot, it is so large that you could fit two Earths inside it. Speaking of size, as planets go, Jupiter is enormous. If Jupiter were hollow, you could fit over 1,000 Earths inside it, and it has over 120 times the surface area of the Earth. In more down-to-Earth terms, if Jupiter were the size of a basketball, Earth would be the size of about a marble. Jupiter also spins very fast. Of all the planets in the solar system, Jupiter has the shortest day, lasting only 9.8 hours. Which means that when Jupiter rises at sunset during the winter months, when the sky is dark for more than 12 hours, in the course of only one night, you can actually see the entire surface of the planet. This rapid spinning has caused Jupiter to take on an M&M shape. And because Jupiter is not a solid body, Jupiter's atmosphere actually spins faster at the equator than it does at the poles, making the clouds form the stripes we've come to know and love. And lastly, of all the planets, Jupiter has the strongest and largest magnetic field. The solar wind causes this field to extend away from Jupiter to almost the orbit of Saturn. So, Get outside and gaze upon the king of the planets. It's easy to do when you keep, keep looking, looking up. Quick check of the ice edge tells you what you need to know here. If you're in St. Paul and St. George, the blue shaded area is the uh, marginal ice zone with concentrations less than 80%. Doesn't have anything to do with thickness. The white area is above 80% and that is the main sea ice pack there. As this is moving to the south and west on that northeasterly wind, this has been getting closer and closer to St. Paul. And if you look very carefully, there's the red dot and there's the blue line. And uh, those two things are not very far apart. It looks like the nearest sizable strip again is about five nautical miles or so from St. Paul to the north and east. However, with persistent north and easterly winds the next couple days, that could get a little bit closer. So if you're in St. Paul or St. George, it's very possible that you're going to start seeing a little more ice there. And we would love to know about that. Please go to weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice, or if you have our sea ice desk phone number already, we would love for you to use that. Let us know what you see in St. Paul and St. George, as that helps everything out across the Bering Sea, and we love to pass on that information and love to update our map. So let us know. Weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice. Here's a look at southeast now. Strong southeasterly winds will be a little more gusty as you head into the inside waters tomorrow. 30 to 40 knots there with 6 to 10, 11 foot seas. In the Lynn Canal, southerlies at 20 knots with a 4 foot sea. The outer coast, 25 to 30, looking at 13 to as high as 15 foot seas across the outer coast tomorrow. Winds become a little more southwesterly and diminish for most areas as we get into Saturday. Southerlies continue for the central and northern sections of the inside water. Southwesterlies over the Clarence Strait, 30 knots with a 9 foot sea there. 19 foot seas outside of the Dixon entrance up to Sitka and 17 to 18 foot seas a little bit further north. Here's a south central. Easterlies persist inside of Prince William Sound, 30 knots with a 6 foot sea, 13 to 14 foot seas across the north and western Gulf. Southeasterlies blowing into Kodiak Island tomorrow, 20 knots with a 17 foot sea, north and westerly or north and easterly winds coming down Cook Inlet and Shelikoff Strait as we get into the afternoon tomorrow. So all of this should be improving as we go through the day compared to what you see right now. Conditions out there at storm force in many areas across the northern Gulf. For Saturday, north and easterly winds continue down Cook Inlet. Southwesterly is inside of Shelikoff Strait and east of uh, Kodiak Island. Uh, east and southeasterly continue a little bit further north, though, so low pressure still hovering 
right about here. Southeasterly is around Prince William Sound, 25 knots with a four foot sea on Saturday for Bristol Bay. Northeasterly is at 20 knots. Northerly is down the coast. Watch out for heavy freezing spray, 20 knots with a 12 foot sea. And northwesterly is coming off the Alaska Peninsula, 20 to as high as 35 knots, 16 to 18 foot seas on Friday. That should improve with a westerly wind at 30 knots, 15, 12 to 15 foot seas there. South and westerly winds coming in across Bristol Bay and the Bering Sea coast, anywhere from uh, 10 foot seas with heavy freezing spray on that 30 knot wind. As we look at the Aleutians, northerlies for the central and eastern part of the chain, 30 to 40 knots from Nikolsky to Unalaska. It looks like as high as 17 foot seas south of Nikolsky to Unalaska. There, north and easterly winds west of Adak. Uh, looks like 8 to 9 foot seas are expected. As we get into Saturday, winds diminish even more across the west. Take a look at this right here south of Adak and Atka. Winds go variable at times, uh, very light winds compared to everything else out to the east. 20 to 25 around Nikolsky to Unalaska and 15 to 25 knots across the Pacific coast, anywhere from 8 to 9 foot seas there. For the west, northerlies are going to be in charge. And again, this is what's pushing the ice edge further closer to uh, St. Paul and St. George with heavy freezing spray generally south of the ice edge, of course. Uh, that should pick up a little bit uh, just uh, in the vicinity of the ice edge. And then, of course, with the wind staying up, uh, it could continue a little bit further south as well. 25 to 30 knots, 6 foot seas around St. Matthew, 9 foot seas around the Pribilovs. That becomes a northwesterly flow on Saturday. Uh, many areas looking at 25 knots throughout the day, more of a northerly flow around St. Lawrence Island and into the Bering Strait. Also outside of Kotzebue Sound, winds are fairly light though across the Chukchi and the Beaufort Sea Coast for your Friday, 10 to 15 most areas. Uh, looks like 10 to 15 knots for the Beaufort Sea Coast on Saturday. Northeasterly is picking up down the Chukchi Coast as well. From Barrow down toward Point Hope, you'll see a difference of about 10 knots or so, but all of these blowing from northeast, uh, becoming northerly outside of Kotzebue Sound. Let's recap tonight's weather. Low pressure is in charge of the Gulf again, and that's blowing a front into the northern and eastern Gulf Coast, picking up winds for southeast tomorrow and tonight for south central and tomorrow for the Alaska Peninsula. Rain and snow possible for many locations, accumulating snow possible for areas between Bethel and uh, the Aleutian Range. Generally about a half inch to one inch there, but winds will be coming up from the north for many locations across the west coast. Watch for some pockets of snow on the north slope with areas of rain across many of the uh, Gulf communities. Thanks for watching. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1 800 WX Brief for a formal pre flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.